It's Matt Gunn and Jim T. Graham and Jason Cole on the live RC Group's video podcast. Is that what we're calling it now, Jim? The podcast or is it just a video chat? It's the live RC Group's video hangout, y'all. Yeah, man. And I got the Legacy Aviation Mini Turbo Duster. This thing is beast. Look at the prop on this thing, Jason. You think it ought to hover and go vertical? <laughs> it looks kind of small, actually. Yeah, that looks like a giant mustache. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you happen to have any vertical flying uh, excitement? I don't know what. Anyway. What's, what size prop is that? It's got, I think it's a uh, 12 by 8. Looks like a 12, yeah. Eight. Yeah, oh, man. Come on. It's six. a 12. It's a 12 by 6 E. Stop. And it is, this thing is a monster. Look at this plane, dude. It's a so, good looking airplane, man. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, they should uh, just call it the Billy Halbert. Yeah, the Billy Hell Machine. It comes with spurs. Um, so, yeah, man, look at that. Nice, uh, easy to tell which orientation you are in flight. We got Futaba Metal Gear Digital Servos throughout. Love the little Futabas. Um, I love that nose. Look how skinny it is. And it's got a little smile on the front. It's like out of the movie Planes or something. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, really excited to get the review done on this one. We did the little foot last time. And you know what's funny is that this these are small planes, right? This the little foot and the um, turbo mini mini turbo duster. They're I mean forty inch, thirty eight inch wingspan planes. But uh, I'll be putting this on flying giants because and RC groups. But the review will go on both because extreme flight and legacy aviation are just rooted in giant scale. So everybody that flies giant scale birds, they always uh, have one of these in their hangar. Something small to flick around and, and not have to uh, carry a giant can of gasoline and stuff like that. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I, I don't think they're rooted in giant scale because uh, Chris Henson and I go all the way back to the beginning, and one of his okay. first airplanes was a tiny pink and yellow. What was that called, Jason? You remember that airplane? Pink and yellow? Yeah, it had giant bulbous wings on it. It looked like it was filled with helium. So, so uh, Chris has been making uh, small airplanes forever, and I know that uh, Ben Fisher got started with uh, foam core stuff. So. All right, all right. So I take that back. Uh, the the giant scale guys are rooted in small aircraft, and they go <laughs> but, but you're back right. Back. So this is going back to their roots, anyway. Good looking plane, very good performer. Um, the good thing, cool thing, is that the flaps go both directions. So you can uh, have full length ailerons if you want, and you can do like you can. Ailerons, they say that you can set ailerons. it up. You can set up crow, which actually would the realistic way would be like that. So you can set up crow if you want to do those really long down lines and uh, all sorts of stuff. So I'm very excited about flying this one. I know you are. How's that uh, Kike Somanzini airplane going? Oh, it's doing well, man. I'm just waiting for one little part. You know, things it's happen. I didn't. I, I sent it to you. That part shipped a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show everybody what happened. This is how awesome Flex AB, Flex Innovations are. Um, the little piece was missing right here. So this is part of. There's a plastic piece that goes on here, and it allows it to hook in, and then there's a little latch. So it was missing. No problem at all. But it won't hold the cow down. So I wrote Flex, and I actually didn't write my contact, which. Uh, I could have easily done, but I just wrote using their online uh, uh, support system, and within like 30 minutes, they said, it's in the mail, dude. We, we pulled one out, we found a piece, and we put it in the mail. So awesome that they corrected that little issue so fast, and I'm looking forward to flying that one too. Here it is, by the way. I'm sliding all back here, rolling around my giant desk area, all, for the, all to show you guys these planes. There you go. Look at that. So we've seen this one before. I show, We showed it on the last one, but it's ready to maiden. Just got to wait for that part. So pretty cool airplane, huh? Awesome. Cool, man. Cool. Hey, shout out to all the guys on the YouTube chat. One of them says, uh, tell your dog it's not nap time there, Jim T. It's always nap time for this dog. <laughs> Dude, that um, dog. You know, I was – yes. I have to say the live chat must, or the live video must be picking up steam because the second we went live, it just started populating with people. It's 
it's going faster and faster and getting more and more every time, which, you know, that seems a natural occurrence, but that's could go the other way. So I think it it's totally fun. I mean, the chat is for me is, is a lot of fun. I really look forward to that, seeing everybody talk and communicate and comment on what we're talking about. It's just a lot of fun. Speaking of communicating, I'm going to pull the curtain back a little bit. Uh, one of the things I do throughout the day, a couple of times a day, is monitor our YouTube channel. And we've had some pretty big videos come out lately, mostly about the DJI products that have been released. So the view numbers are staggeringly high, which means people are probably watching that video that have nothing to do with RC groups or any of the sites that we run, right? So some of these people are crazy. I mean, some of the posts I read, it's crazy town, man. Just yeah, just say it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the Wild West on YouTube. You know, you just you get people from all over the world commenting. Some of those guys are pretty harsh, man. Oh, you think, that, that, they, they think they knew you. It's crazy. Okay, I have an update. We're going to run out of updates. Well, the show will be over in about three minutes. But uh, <laughs> you know the X Jaguar quadcopter that was giving me so much trouble? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I found a solution. It was pretty awesome what I did because it was just so simple. I put it in a box and I sent it to Tim King, one of our <laughs> reviewers. And I'm like, hey, man, you're the electronic genius. I've seen his shop. It's full of things. I don't even know what they're called. So I said, see what you can do with this because uh, I, I, can't, I can't do this anymore. Uh, nothing about the quad, probably more about my experience with setting up quads and all that. But check that. I, I wrote him and I said, have you flown the quad yet? And he said he hopes to test it today. But check this out. I found a couple of pins shorted in the aux connector. connector. The VCC was shorted to the RSSI, which yeah. is why your RX stopped working. Okay, a -Y. It took out the power to the RX got the receiver, got that fixed and reset clean flight to defaults. Now check this out, Jason, because I, I, I did everything repeatedly and kept getting issues. He said, I also found that the four in one ESC board had an interesting issue. Okay. This is a single board four ESCs on one board, right? He said three of the ESCs had the same firmware and the fourth had a different one. Mm. Got that corrected and everything looks good. Cool. I never would have figured. That's all you had to do, man. That's all you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> so giving, it to, giving it to Tim was the number one best idea I ever had. I, I felt so happy when it got in the box and was shipped away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I do have some DJI news besides me loving my little Mavic here. Oh, um, yeah. I know what the news is. DJI is paying us for our news articles. Oh, yeah. We get... $10,000 per article? Is that what it is? That's All that, insider, that's completely yeah. false. <laughs> that's an insider joke, guys. Well, I'll, I'll take the insider part out. So basically what we did is they made their releases, and we won't talk about it so much today because we already interviewed DJI about the Inspire 2 and the Phantom 4 Pro. And so we did a whole little uh, special segment on that, and then we created two news stories. And I sticky Jason's because I was like, hey, man, this deserves to hang around the top for a while. And then Matt went in and stickied his. Yeah, and we, because I saw Jason stickied, and I said, I don't want to be the only one that's not sticky here. I need to sticky my article, too. I need to be jelly. He was jelly. So was jelly. From the last <laughs> somebody thought that maybe they were paying to have a sticky. And by the way, you cannot pay to have a sticky on RC Groups. And Jason Cole, how often do I let a sticky become a sticky? It's very rare. Almost oh, never. I thought that my sticky was going to get de-stickied by Jim when he saw it. I, I <laughs> thought he was going to be like, Who's the sticky hell sticky? <laughs> all right, so apparently, so we've got a, a kind minute. of a chat group set up for all the guys from the the Drone War show I was on, and they were all communicating and talking about the Phantom Four Pro, the new one, right? That was just announced. We just had a thing about it a couple days ago. Anyway, turns out that you can take two Inspire One controllers and actually bind them both and have a second operator control the camera on the Phantom 4 Pro. What? Wow. What? I don't know why you'd ever really do that because they can only control tilt. And, you know, I, it's just kind of silly because you can't do pan in 360 and you still have to have the pilot actually pan and then y'all. And it's, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. They were talking about just in the tilt axis. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm 
reporting this uh, from secondhand here, so I, ha I don't have experience with it. But if you really wanted to, you could do a second operator for a Phantom yeah. 4 Pro. That has zero advantages. I mean, who wants a monkey on the wheel doing freaking vertical? That's it. It doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. Jared says you can have dual video feed, um, get HDMI out on one of the controllers, and he does say he said it's only in tilt axis. Is yeah, I guess it would be good really to set up as a secondary monitor, but then you could just do the HDMI out on the main monitor if you needed somebody to view it with it in the yeah. If you really need dual operator, go with the Inspire 2. It's by far the best way to do it. But if you're in a pinch and you just had to have precision tilt and you don't want to fly and try to do it, <laughs> yeah. you can do it with the second Inspire 1 controller. Jason, you missed it. I was at the field yesterday. Were you? I was flying with Steve Wattenberg and then hanging out with us was Zachary Buenidia. Josh Gibson came out and flew with us for a little bit. Then Andrew Hodgkinson was there. It turned into a party. Oh, wow. Hey, you know what like, the best part about you see my little name tag says second summer is here. It's like 82 degrees today outside. It's supposed to be 70 tomorrow. You know what the here. best part about that is for this time of year, for us anyway, is our field is normally closed. Uh, it's oh. only open to us to fly from 8 to 3 Monday through Friday at it's the for, at the main field that Jim and I go to. It's for retired old people. Yeah. I'd but say so. Eight to from three. now until like March-ish, March, sure. April, it is open on the weekends. So we can fly dust to dawn Saturday and Sunday now too. And before we get off the topic of our field, Hornet and Z was hanging out with us, flying a quad. Rainbow Rotors was out there. And then finally, Matt Angler and I went out and ate some barbecue at a barbecue joint. It was awesome. <laughs> Matt, Imagine it's mad, me. man. Come on. Wait, Nikolai showed up with you guys? Uh, yeah, was, me, uh, mean Joe Vermillion was out there, and he was so uh, yeah, mean suck. that we made him leave. We're like, get out of here, uh, Mean Joe. Yeah, this is a non-mean field. That's right. Noise. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I gotta I get working on my P fifty one, man. I got a kit at APP kit sitting over here. I got a I got parts coming in tomorrow for it, so I can really start cranking on it this weekend. That thing's gonna look so scale that people will think it's a real airplane. It's not gonna look very scale at all. I'm probably <laughs> not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the paint job. I'm just gonna do something pretty basic. Uh maybe stars and bars or something, just not very detailed, but just just get some paint on there and then throw some glue on it, slap some gear in it put some laminate on it and go fly. Hey, I know this isn't for the right website, but Matt Gunn, are we about to have a contest or what? Yeah, man, we are going to have a contest. Did you see what? me post on Facebook about that? No. I went to the flying giants, Facebook page and said, Hey, I heard a rumor that we're about to have a contest. I wonder what it's for. Oh uh, yeah. See, I was waiting for you to get back to me and uh, here we are getting back now live on the air. If it's for, if it's for uh, flying giants, it's not going to be cheap, and it's going to be awesomely large. Can, let's talk about what the do we we know what the airframe is going to be? Yes. Yep, it's the uh, Laser X from um, Peak. What's going on? from Peak model? So here's the deal. We haven't made a post yet, so it's all here's the deal. Here's the deal. There's a lot of Chinese manufacturers out there, right? That's There's right. some that are good and some that are not so good. Everything pretty much comes from China unless you've got these uh, – unless you've got the German aircraft line and stuff like that. They do the in-house builds. And there's a few U United States uh, – U.S. companies that build in-house, whatever. But a lot of stuff comes from China. There's varying levels of uh, – of finished work, how things, uh, you know, the, the quality of, especially in these giant scale planes, these giant scale ARFs. So you can get some really cruddy ones and you can get some really nice ones. And the point is, is that Peak model is one of the most awesome rated uh, budget Chinese ARF companies out there, if that's a, a term, which I think you guys are catching my drift. So Peak model does really well, man. They have a great following. Their, their aircraft are lightweight, they're strong, and then everybody that flies them says great things about them. So uh, they're advertisers with us. We work with them every once in a while. We do some news stories. So I pitched an ad, uh, pitched the idea to Peak Model, said let's give away one of your planes. So they want to give away the, uh, the Laser X, which is a 55 to 60 cc uh, 3D airplane, and we'll have that up soon. So I'm very excited about that. 
we, we're still discussing what the parameters of said contest are going to be, but it's going to be easy. So uh, if, if you're a Flying Giants member, watch the homepage. Even if you're not on Flying Giants, watch the homepage. And it's as easy as signing up to get in. So Here's, here's what we'll do, Mac Gunn. You know, we're talking about that other story that fell through. Let's make sure we have this contest hot and ready to go Friday. You got it. That's that'll easy. Be, that'll be our big Friday thing. Yeah, so tomorrow, obviously, Friday. And for our live listeners, if you have any suggestions on what a user would have to do to enter, please put that in the live chat, and we'll discuss before the end of the hour. Oh, that's a good one. Booyah. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen with a contest involving rcgroups.com, the world's largest and most active, the 34th largest web forum in the world. 34th largest web forum on planet Earth. Says a website that we were looking at yesterday. I believe it. Although their numbers were low, our count numbers were low, and our user stats were low, so it makes me think we're probably, you know, number 10. something. <laughs> I can't verify that. Okay, everyone. Grotner, awesome. Manny, if you haven't met him, go to Toledo. He'll be in the booth. And uh, he said, Jim, we want to have a contest. How do we do it? So I told him all the things we like to do. And so we have the Hornet 250 try coming up. It's very bug-like. How, how, do, you call, how do you say that? Try. <laughs> try. And I so uh, I, I came up with this contest idea. So uh, use this when you're giving us some suggestions there in the in the box. Um, it was name your hornet. So it's called a hornet. So I thought you could call yours Harry the Hornet or uh, the Triad. <laughs> I would call it Stingy. It's a bit of an inside joke, but Jared says horny McHornet face. Hey, nobody oh, else like will Bodie understand McBoat that face? except for me. <laughs> that's Bodie McBoat face, dude. Did anyone see that firefighter today? It was the world's best firefighter name. His name was Les McBurney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh what was his uh cousin's name oh no that was real his name really was les mcburn no but somebody who was it they posted his uh um oh god they posted his his, his brother that starts fires <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but i do know that you can enter to win this contest until what's the date Eleven thirty. the date of eleven thirty sixteen, 16 and uh it's got uh, quite a 12,000, is that right? 12,000 views, yeah, wow. Okay, so enter oh, to win this cool tricopter. Fred Provost wrote his brother Moore, M-O-O-R-E, turned out to be an arsonist. Moore Big Bernie. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jim. Sorry. Oh, no, that's it. Uh, that's maybe right. that's the contest. We uh, come up with the brother's name for the ultimate firefighter. I'm going to share my screen for a second. That's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, the best one's already been named. Uh, which one is it? This one. Bam. Uh, so that? Andrew posted and was talking about uh, this new C1 Chaser flying wing. I think this is it. It's a 1200 millimeter EPO flying wing FPV thing. Oh. It's new from Banggood. Uh, there it is. Okay, now I can scroll. So bottom side looks pretty cool. Let's look at those specs. Check out the specs. Three cell, 3300 lipo, 6.3 prop, 30 amp ESC, 2212 Wings, motor. So this is a fairly like this could almost be like a a why one that, design like racing wing. You why know? does that top image look different than like it looks like there's a center section made out of, or is that just painted? That's, that's the bottom. One's what? the top and one's the bottom. Yeah, the top is the black part. Looks like there's like a plastic cover or something probably with access to the battery bay. I want to know when these things are just being covered in fins, you know, to, for the stability. So you've got an outboard, an inboard, a midboard. Hey, <laughs> did you know you can do slow or fast fly switching freely? <laughs> with the it throttle. Cabin space can also be used as FPV aircraft. Equipped with a damping platform mounting hole on the engine room cover. How much is it? Uh, where is it at? There it is. I'm probably going to need five dollars. That's nothing. That doesn't. That that's nothing. Does What's, that come with electronics? Yeah, I need an RTS. I mean, it servos too, right? So that's okay. Recommended in the FPV version, not included. So you don't get the motor or the speed controller or the prop. I want everything. Do they have a version? Yeah, I don't want to. Well, I'm past sourcing parts. Mm, it looks like it's a kit. I mean, they may have a oh. different version that's 
built. I can type. Well, yeah, we won't waste that. This They're is the rare. kit. They probably have a plug and play version. Hey, if Banggood's out there listening, I do have that 200 milliwatt micro camera sitting here. I've tested it. I've done everything, but I am waiting on the micro Sky Hunter to show up to put it on. So there you go. Waiting for that to happen. Waiting, waiting. Waiting to fly. You know what's funny is that uh, after my uh, Manta review, somebody posted, you know, you flew this thing like you stole it the entire flight. How does it fly slow? And then I thought, you know what? I've never flown it slow. <laughs> I don't know how it flies slow. Everything is wide open with that thing. Um, now, the reality is, is it handles pretty well on landing, which is the only time it goes slow. So... Good I got to figure out what I'm going to do this year for for racing. I'm I because I've got my uh, wyvern hanging maybe up I, over there. That's my it. speed demon, and then I'm probably going to have to have a few more for the racing season. So I'm thinking about the Type Ws uh, mm -hmm. since they perform so well and they're so you know easy to deal with. You don't have to spend three hours building it. Might I offer you a design that uh, or an idea? Go the, for it. The ready-made RC one that's just coming out. That yeah. is a hundred and thirty plus mile an hour plane, dude. And I saw it fly, and I saw it destroy. RMRC.com is for sale for thirty seven thousand dollars. The website name RMRC.com. I accidentally typed in RMRC.com, and uh, it's up. For sale. That's that's funny. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go to Ready Made RC instead. There we go. Ready Made RC. But you can buy RMRC for the affordable price of $37,000. Darn. How much you want to bet that? That's directed straight to Ready Made RC. All right. So they don't have that plane up yet. Um, I don't even know. What is it called? Does anybody know what their little their wing, wing is? Wing basketball? Racer 1. No, Just I have no idea. I don't remember. Anyway, you should lot. look into that one. It should be out pretty soon. That should be pretty cool, yeah. yeah. But that would be a – that's one to consider. It's fast. Yeah, right? man. Well, everyone, we have a new AMA president. Yeah. We got a good one, I Mr. think. Mr. Trump, right? <laughs> yeah, right. There were many uh there were many <laughs> discussions about this. The old school uh let's get back to line of sight uh presidential thoughts and others. And I think Rich Hansen is kind of a nice in the middle of the road uh, answer to everyone's questions. Have you heard about the protesting though in the Pacific Northwest over this? No. They're burning their airplanes in the street. They're anti-drone people and they just, they're, they're shutting down highways walking across it. That's not real. Well, uh, oh, yeah, listen, <laughs> listen to me not going there. <laughs> I'm not voicing an opinion. <laughs> no, this is great. This is a lot. There wasn't really much of a turnout. Uh, it was only about 15% of the entire AMA body voted. Is that right? And oh, my God. All you, had to do, all you had to do was literally walk your tail to the mailbox and drop the vote back in. You it's walked out to the mailbox to get the vote, to get the paper, <laughs> right? Why, and you got to walk out the next day to go get the mail. All you had to do was check one box, one box with a pin, and put it, postage is paid, put it back <laughs> in the mailbox, and 75% and of members couldn't do that. Ultimately, it's got to all be digital at some point, not just for this, but for everything. Like a uh, credit card purchase, it needs to be verified, but... He did win with more than uh, double yeah. the amount of votes than, than the second yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he's, he's rooted really deep in this. Uh, in well, the, been a member yeah. of the AMA for 50 years. He's a good dude, too, you know. So he's. I think he's going to have modeler's interests at heart. I always like talking to him, too, at shows and stuff like that. He's interested across multiple, diff, uh, uh, you know, um, disciplines of RC. He likes a lot of sight. He likes FPV. He likes giant scale, foamies. He's he's. I would always see him at the uh, Horizon Indoor and the uh, E Fest. So he loves the indoor stuff, and then you see him at all the big shows too. 
and he flies FPV. You can't ask for the a more rounded person to be run, to be at the helm. And I, it's I, an important uh, part of our hobby, uh, or the p- important time in the history of our hobby right now, because you can't ignore FPV and you can't ignore these other things that are going on. You could try to, but it wouldn't. Yeah. It wouldn't work. You have to at least acknowledge they exist and that there are guys like us out there that fly that way. Yep. And he has experience lobbying on Capitol Hill against, against, with uh, the FAA. And as you know, the FAA is like the, can, is gonna, is a big threat to model aviation. And they can say one thing and then do another the next day, which, as we learned. Yeah. As we learned the hard way. And so so have they. They thought one thing was happening and then the next day they get the press release that we all see. So Which anyway, we follow religiously in the pages of rcgroups.com. The world's model, largest. Yeah. And our model advocacy thread. Well, so. once again, I can tell that winter's upon us because I keep scrolling down to see how many people are online at this very moment. I'm going to guess 20,000. Oh, 19,319. Dude. Yeah. That's just dude, the weather. Uh, hey, look at this gigantic battery, y'all. What does something like that cost? This is a. Let me put that back on screen. There you go. This is a Flight Power 4S16000. Would you? What the heck do you use that for? Would you get on an airplane with that? No, I think it's well over the the maximum amount of milliamps. In fact, some of these packs you cannot ship to a home address. You have to ship to a business address because. Uh, they're psycho like that about. I, I heard you had to have your a, a individual FAA number just for that pack. <laughs> yeah, I have to register with alcohol, yeah. tobacco, and firearms. Just the pack alone. No, this pack is going in the. Um, no, you can carry that on. Sixteen thousand milliamps. Oh, I carry. I've carried um. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I've had a box full of. Is it eight? Two, four, six, eight. 6S 10,000s and a carry-on wow. pack. And That's a lot of milliamps, okay. brother. Yeah. It depends on the airline. Some of them might be more, uh, you know, following the rules <laughs> more than yeah. others. Well, this pack is a um, – this one's going in the Skywalker Eve 2000. So this, Eve. Is, the, yeah, this is the main flight pack for fixed wing. This is not a multi-rotor in this specific – configuration but i have a 6s 16,000 coming for another multi-rotor uh, thing i'm working on but this is a 10s pack man but it's so big if freaking there's no way that you're going to over amp this thing uh, well, i know you can't make it to tennessee but maybe that dang pack can make it oh dude i could fly down and back you guys could <laughs> a cup of coffee you guys could put one of those awesome burritos that you always go to that mexican joint and send it back to me and it'll be cold by the time it gets back but at least i'll have it you know, that's my thoughts at least. Cool. Hey, for those guys out there that maybe have Mavics on order and are waiting and waiting and waiting, uh, there are reports coming out today that if you call your local Apple store, yep. get a manager, somebody actually at the store, uh, they can check the back and they are, they do have units. So people are actually going to this, this Apple stores today and buying Mavics uh, in person without having any pre-orders or anything. So, and they're not the demo unit. <laughs> yeah, not the demo unit. One guy actually walked out of the store, had oh. purchased a, a base shell. It was a Mavic yeah. shell with no innards or guts or batteries or anything. A yeah. non-functioning shell with no – not even a camera in it. <laughs> yeah. It was a camera shell. Oh, not an RCG user. Exactly. Poor guy. He had to take it from awesome. to charge it on the way home and nothing happened. And I'm like <laughs> – got to feel a little bit light. I mean, now he's going to be disappointed when he gets the real thing and it's got actual weight to it. <laughs> like, Man, this thing is light. Yeah, oh, that, that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> Jason Cole just had a review come out on the Blade Conspiracy 220 Bound of Fly by Horizon Hobby. Mm-hmm. So, Jason, do you like this thing? I do. I like it a lot, actually. I raced with it last weekend at our local uh, club race here. How'd you do? Uh, I did okay. I, I actually bumped into the beginner bracket down from the advance just because I haven't done it in so long. And the way it's kind of a long story, but the way the people worked out, it was beneficial, uh, for the organizers to, uh, do that. So, 
Did you own the beginner? Oh, I, class? Yeah, I was doing like eight laps. He didn't like, own it. He owned it. So it's fast and it feels good and it's pre-tuned and you don't have to do a single thing on the computer, which well, is my they, favorite part because I hate tuning and you don't have to touch the computer with this. You really? just bind it to your radio and it's good to go. All right, well, dude, I'm, I'm sold. I mean, I'm, literally I'm sold because I hate tuning. Yeah, yeah, this thing is professionally tuned and it feels great. So just to, I won't go through the whole thing, but uh, the concept, this was Jason's concept, was uh, that he would take it out of the box and there it is. Hey, Jason. Hi, hey, everyone. I'm Jason me. Cole. Hey, I'm looking right into the sun and the camera. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were trying to get, my eyes. get the sun oh, off. Yeah. So what He's he does in the... Say what? He's doing a Popeye. He's like, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So basically what happens in this video that you can find on RC groups is he pops open the case and goes through everything that you have to do to fly, proving that uh, this can be put together in the field and flow. Nice. So I'll fast forward a little bit. Yeah, so that's it out of the box. I mean, it's done, you know, He's setting up his radio per the instructions. Be sure to reverse things. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Yeah. So I was like, Try, I wasn't I wasn't trying to hurry, but I'm trying to talk and think and then do this for the video at the same time. And so I totally missed a part in the manual about reversing the aileron and rudder channels in your radio. So yeah. the first takeoff, I, it kind of takes off and it starts veering left, and I I go right aileron to correct, and it just goes more left and crashes immediately. <laughs> this is this is the scene right before it flew straight at me, <laughs> and this is actually the take where after he reversed the proper channels. No, yeah. that, well, oh, is that right? Oh, this is late. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Whoa. No, that was the yeah. That yeah. was the first one, right? <laughs> hey, at least you put it on. <laughs> at least you're uh, uh, secure yeah. enough in your. There's me reading the manual, and I'm like, to, don't back to, to the first channels. channels. People what? eat you alive, man, and they're like, look at this noob. Well, I've had people <laughs> uh, compliment me, uh, showing me crash like over and over again, and yeah. not not skipping over that part. So there it is. This thing's pretty slow. What's the maximum speed on this couple of miles an hour? It's only, yeah, 34 miles per hour at the most. Do you have some? Yeah, it's totally low. No, it's, I don't know what the speed is. It's, it's you know, 40, 45. It's pretty neat. It's a 2205 motor. What am I doing? On 4S. Yeah, what are you looking at? I don't know why I, I got stuck in there. Hey, you edited this thing. No, no, Jay, yeah, Jason. <laughs> Score. You guys ever shoot in a video and uh, you lose the airplane and, oh. and you just can't find it? Yes, all the time. I have yeah. never left an airplane in the field. No, no, no. I mean, in yeah, the no, no, while no, you're videotaping it. Oh, we oh, <laughs> like Jason would be. You just can't yeah. find it. Oh, It'll be like in some other yeah. hemisphere, and I'm like, whoa, wait. When I do that, I instantly pan out and keep the camera pointed in that general direction that I know the airplane is. Right. And then I look for it as the thing is just sitting there. And then I go, there it is, and zoom back in. It's all yeah, the way to I take my eye out of the camera, find it, and then I try to find it in the camera, which almost is uh, just as hard to get back on it, even after you see it. Well, speaking of filming, back here's on. something I want to try. I think I'm going to try it this weekend. Well, it's gonna be stinking windy though. We got a cold front blowing through. Maybe I'll try it tomorrow at lunch. It'll be warm up Friday. I want to take the Mavic and use the active track. I'm gonna take off, get it in the air, hover it, and then I'm gonna take off with one of my paragliders. And because they're fairly slow, and I want to fly my paraglider around, get it going straight, Hell get the Mavic talk. controller over, do an active track little thing over it, and say follow it, and then see if I can film the paraglider. And fly it at the same time aerially. I'll be doing all of this by myself. I think it should be, be able to cool. because it goes. If you if you can make that thing go, I say slow enough. I don't know what the limit is, but it's a big bright parachute in the sky. It should have enough contrast to track it. Should it be enough well. contrast, and it's definitely slow enough for the Mavic to keep up. No problems at all. So I think it's possible. View. I'm curious to see how well it's going to do. I'm curious too now. That sounds pretty dang cool. What if you had two of them going at once? Mm, uh, yeah, four. 
Yeah, and one good. doing an orbit, one doing Making a, a baker's dozen. <laughs> Uh, one going around. But I think I am going to start <laughs> utilizing this in more of my reviews, at, like when we're taxiing out on the runway or something. Yeah, man. Because the, the battery life's more than most of our flights. So I can just take the Mavic up and just have it do an orbit and focus on us, like standing there, just to have this quick shot of, you know, the plane on the runway and us standing next to it. Just some just some cool, interesting things to add into the reviews. We definitely have to have two because you're going to have one watching us and the other following the airplane. Then we can do jump cuts and that'd be awesome. What are you watching, Mecca? And you're watching a video. Wait, who's watching? No, I, I heard see, my voice. No, you didn't actually. What happens is, and this is a, uh, I don't know, this is a regular occurrence on Thursday afternoons. What happens is, is I text my wife oh. and I say, hey, doing my video chat at 3 p.m. Eastern. Talk to you in an hour. Then she proceeds to text me incessantly, like I never said it. So that's why I always sort of look up and I'm like, I hope something's not burning down. No. That's, so the, that's, that, my yes. that's how uh, relationships are formed and uh, cemented, I guess. Yeah, there you go. So there's a thread in a model aircraft and drone advocacy on RC groups. Will Trump be drone friendly? So I always had a theory that Obama. I read something that Obama talked about drones and from then on it got pretty tight on us. And I felt like uh, there was some directive coming down from the, from the white house. And that's why a lot of things happened that happened to us. So uh, I think this is a pretty valid question. I wonder if all that will cool off with the new president in the office. I just don't think it is anything on his priority list. And yeah, that when it true. does come up, when it finally comes up, on his paper, I mean, on his desk to sign some sort of thing. I just think he will blindly sign one way or the other without caring. That's my take on it, at least. I don't think he cares. He has so many hurdles to overcome, so many things to learn. Without going in too far into politics, I don't think Donald Trump cares one bit about drones. I could be wrong, but it could, well, be, it could yeah. go either way. It could go bad or good. And he wouldn't even know what he signed. I hate to say it. That's my thought. <laughs> Jason, Thoughts? what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, well, I got a couple of things. Well, I was just going to say, uh, he's got, you know, he's not going to be sitting there making all of the decisions on his own accord, right? His, he's kind of a professional manager. So his, his kind of goal is to hire the right people for the job, you know? So there's going to be people that know what the heck they're doing in that area, you know, helping to make those decisions, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so they talked about we're this is just kind of a listener comment here. They he asked me if I still paraglide and and I was referring to the RC paraglider here. So here's uh, Woody and Woody my here. hacker our paraglider. So we've got the wing uh, inside the bag here, and then he pulls the brake lines with his arms, and he waves at people a lot when he's flying. But it's got a motor in the back, runs on a little three cell lipo. Do you have your transmitter handy? Uh, yeah, it's behind me. Can you turn, can you turn Woody on? At the end of it, so he's holding on to it like that. <laughs> One second. <laughs> this is worth the wait. It's pretty good. Everyone, when we're at Joe Nall and Seth, we get these things out, and when he fires us up, people think it's funny. So this is the Jedi radio, which I like too much to have brought with me to Croatia because I didn't want anything to happen to it. But one of the cool oh. things is when we want to start the transmitter... <laughs> The jetty transmitter. Oh, you're, you're, you're an action figure. You are a child's plaything. I don't um, know if I can listen to that every single time I fire up my transmitter. It's, it's got a volume. Oh, yeah. His own. Also, uh, go over to the channel that has your other. My master. God, this is getting a little bit too intense. Go over to the <laughs> channel that has the, uh, the smaller paraglider on it. Oh, it's got me. Yeah, I don't know. Can you see Mario? You can't see Mario. He's hanging up too high. Uh, that would be Oxy. Hello, no, no. it's me, Mario. He had a little bit of a. That's Here we go. So when I fly Mario, I do that, and then I've got music on here. If I make like a bad landing or a good landing. If I make a bad landing. 
And then we got the music we can play while I'm flying. I'm buying that. Glitching, man. Table, <laughs> so that's fun. I love the radio for more than just that. But it is cool that you can do cool things with audio, too. I'm reading the, uh, this is the problem with live chat, as you'll read You're reading it. the chat? You finally found the link? Well, I was on it the last three shows, but I'm trying to, if you read it too much, you'll get knocked off. Uh, it's its own protocol, uh, Jared, on the on the Jetty radio. It's its own thing. I don't. It's not really compatible with anything else. I don't know. I don't remember what the actual, you know, code protocol that they use. They're not that expensive. Um, you know, thirty, forty dollars for the receivers, maybe. But they all have telemetry. Anything you want to get, you can get through the receiver. Um, they can do S bus, X bus, D bus. Uh, PPM, PWM, um, you can do anything you want with it. And what's really my favorite part is what you can do in the programming because um, it's got accelerometers. So when I do that, when it's on, it does that jetty, uh, jet eye thing. Um, but you can also program anything. So like jet guys, for instance, they can program this thing with all the sensors that uh, when they're coming in for a landing, they can tell the radio that when I'm below – uh, 80 miles per hour and, you know, uh, below 100 feet. Uh, when those two things happen, go ahead and deploy the retracts, drop the flaps to 20%, whatever their landing settings are. It can happen automatically without you even having to trigger a switch or anything. It's all based on the telemetry data. So all you got to do is line up, come in for a landing, all that stuff happens. And then what they like to do is, is when they, after they touch down, they tilt the radio back and that applies the brakes on the wheels proportionally to the tilt. Pretty stinking awesome. And there's so many logical uh, switches that you can do and, and just anything you want based on the telemetry data, based on your own data, um, you can make it happen. So it's just so robust. It's really the best system out there that I've used. So that's why this I is, like it so much. This is the Army version with the uh, – uh, Camouflage. On it. I'm pretty sure I didn't understand at first why they sent this to me until I realized that I wear pants like this all the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, didn't, I, I didn't get it at first. But uh, the one thing I wanted to say, this isn't really available to the public. It's more of a hack slash mod. But on the back, this is a uh, created aluminum. Show them the back of yours, Jason. Yeah. So it's just a standard. Are you uh, presenting yourself? Because yeah, I'm not talking about that. Just to show how cool yeah. it is, though. So, so there's, it's just a, it's aluminum. It's, it's a solid aluminum case, pretty much, um, with the back. Feels really great. And it's so, got Hall Effect, you know, gimbals, metal gimbals. It's amazing. This is a modded back with this little slot in here. And then this is a DM9 Spectrum. And so when it's out, it, on, it works just like a normal jetty with the jetty receivers. But when you pop this guy in, then it now works with spectrum receivers. So do you have to go in and turn off the RF output on the jetty? It's automatic. It's automatic. So there's a there's a internal cable in here, and all I had to do was plug that into this back, this base, and that was my question. What do I have to do to go back to normal? And he said, all you have to do is take out your module. And, that that out. and that's not available to the public. Cause that's freaking stinking amazing. It's not. As far as <laughs> I, know, I got it right. The guy's like, Hey, I want to send you something. And I took it. And um, then I said, listen, am I doing a review on this or what's happening? He goes, no, I'll just use it and, and see if you like it. And, <laughs> and I was like, really? Cause I kind of like to do a review. And he said, well, it's just not something that we sell. And wow. this, this did not come from jetty. This came from, and it's really terrible. I don't have his name on the tip of my tongue here, but it's a user from Heli Freak. And I run into him at shows. So I will say getting this out is tricky and will. Yeah, don't oh, worry. Oh, you oh, can leave it. There we go. And Matt, on the programming, it's a lot easier than OpenTX. Uh, it's just really, really intuitive. Um, you don't have to be an engineer to figure out how to do stuff, which is. Talking really to me? Nice. Talking to Mad on the chat. Uh Oh, wow. Don't do that. See, I'm not on the chat. Yeah, when I was talking to ZB, he was he said, uh, this was at Joe Nall before you got that thing. When did you get that? Not this year. You got it before. Mine? I've had it a few years now. Oh, Jim. 
I got you, this right after Seth or and before Joe Nall. Okay, yeah. So Joe Nall, two thousand and fifteen. Um, I was talking to ZB, and he's like, "I really want to get Jim one with camouflage on it." That's what he kept saying. I'm like, "Do it! <laughs> he wants it. Just do it already." <laughs> so that's why you got it. Good stuff. It, huh? The other thing I want is that new DX radio with the leather handles because I want a hand tool. Oh, is that the twenty? Yeah, the DX twenty. Yeah, they should let me do that, at least for somebody. I can hand tool some leather for uh, the back plates. Those come on and off. I did a little research, so it wouldn't be like I was a, a hack job. I could actually do it. We yeah, they partner with them on a, you could do an RCG logo in those things and partner with them on a giveaway. Yeah, if you, or you could try to sell them on Horizon Hobby. They probably would let you not have to do all that crazy vendor stuff because you're so cool with Horizon Hobby. <laughs> Next thing you know, you have to quit this job and just tool leather side handles. Until the radio goes out and they invent the next one. Although th that is so awesome that it has real leather on the back. Yeah. I think you can pop it out for different things. You can buy it. Yeah, you can swap them, yeah. So what else, guys? So it's November 17th. That means that it's not winter time. I guess around December 1st around here, Jason, it's definitely going to be cold. Until yeah. the 26th, though, it's all up for grabs. It'll be 78 tomorrow. Uh, Matt Gunn. He, oh, let's look at Matt Gunn's face before I say this. Look, it's oh, damn it. That's my face. Are we see? Oh, and I just said, damn it. <laughs> Matt, are we, are we seeing Matt's face? There we go. Yeah, okay. up here. It's going to snow tomorrow, right? I hate you guys so much. It's going to snow tomorrow at your house. No, it's, it's supposed to snow this weekend. It is like the first snow of the Holy season. Holy cow. Really? I was out flying this morning. I took the Mavic up. I dropped my son off at preschool, and there was a like a fog warning. So I go, whenever there's a fog problem or warning, I go to this spot overlooking the valley, and I'm above the fog. So it's just like I'm literally standing above the cloud line. And then I go and fly above it, and it looks really awesome. So I went over there this morning, right after I dropped him off at 8 o'clock. It was like 34 degrees. Everything was frost all over. My hands were so numb after five minutes of flying. I'm such a wuss. I can't take it. Cannot take this cold weather. But my wife loves it. So My wife, too. Our weather's not like your weather, though. Did you guys see where the guy caught his wife cheating on him with the drone? He flew yes. over the car. <laughs> yeah. It was I about to call that. numbers, man. You know, you fly enough things up in the air, you catch somebody cheating. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. So, Hornet says, uh, "Tell Matt that was kick ass to watch live." What you did this morning? I saw it posted, but then the video was down or something. Did you have it pulled or something? Yeah, I took it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't get to watch, man. I let it. I, I let it stay up for a little bit, and then I thought, you uh, know, I think I'll take it down. I think but, that could be cool for us to do at, at like Joan All and Seth and some RC events and things is, is to oh, do a live, live awesome. feed. As long as you have – the problem with it is that you can't really do too much of a live feed at Joan All because the bandwidth isn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do they, you, have they got it worked out to where you can do audio off of your phone or device while you're flying? audio or? off the device. They yes. ask when you, cool. fire up, when you fire up on Facebook Live, when you, when you hit the live button – it says, do you want to do audio live out of your device? Yes or no? And I, I usually just hit no because it's just me sitting there going. Yeah. But, at, you know, but at an event, it could be cool for us to be talking oh, instead yeah. of just, just an aerial image and that's it. You know, you, you get nothing to really like, and You can answer questions because on your screen, the questions pop up in oh. the Go app. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, go fly over there and see what that is. Yeah, and you can say – I will most definitely fly over there. Thanks for asking that awesome man, 229, you know, or whatever. And then so, at Nall, uh, we'll fly in the evenings, and there's always people that come up and hang out with this, so that'd be the perfect time to go out and do it. Here's the deal I cool. found out, that if you have a marginal cell signal, and you go up and you just stop, and you pan really slowly, it keeps the great HD look. The second you swing that thing around faster yeah. than it just goes to SHI, whatever. So um, it's, oh, it's, in your, yeah, it's in your best interest to use a good cell signal and to fly slowly. And that's it. As long as and you they do have that. The, uh, there's a YouTube streaming, right? It's not just YouTube, Facebook. It's YouTube. It's uh, Facebook. I think there's Justin.tv in there. Justin Bieber? 
Yeah. And then, and then you can do your own you, as long as if you have your own stream set up. Server, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, the, all the stuff. That they is cool. Man. And so they can do that with the, um, you can do that with the Osmo on the ground and you can do it with the uh, Ariel. So we're covered, man. We can walk around with the Osmo. And now we all, we have our new iPhone 7s. So um, I would think Toledo is going to be cool. I love Chad's expression in that. He's like, yeah, I'm just doing this naturally. <laughs> like, yeah, so everyone, if you don't know who this is, it's Tail Dragger RC. And on the left is lovely Natasha. And on the right is Chad. Yeah. And these two are married. And they run this company. And uh, They're Chevy. Yeah, that's uh, that truck has like a flat wood bed on it. But they have these new shirts. And I didn't ask permission. I saw this pop up, and I stole the images, wrote the article. I said some exactly what I felt. That Chad and Natasha of Teldragger RC are good people. They work hard to bring out the best RC offerings possible and stand by what they sell. They do it for the same reason we're in the hobby, because they love it. And uh, they just had some oh, new Oh, shucks. Plus, uh, I said that they were RC supermodels, that they've left the, uh, the RC world to be, become models in the RC world, which is a very small group of people <laughs> well think, they they wear them well i think uh miss ashley would be the only other rc uh model that really exists or natasha you can't forget natasha i don't see too, natasha too much these days <laughs> Boris. we'd have uh miss ashley on the podcast more which i think everyone would love but her signal is so terrible she lives it, in bfe it's like it's like no internet tennessee is where she lives yeah, she can't live stream from a Mavic, that's for sure. No. Well, I can tell it's winter time because the events are thinning out and we're running out of stuff to talk about. And you know what? There's no reason to talk about it if there's nothing to talk about. Do you guys have anything you need to hit upon? Yeah, my next event won't be till February. I'm going to go down to Florida for the, uh, what was it called? Oh, my gosh. It's a DLG contest. It's called something. The, the pumpkin? No, 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 no. San Velasco. What is with these names? I don't know. It's a place, I think. Oh. Yeah. It, the cool part is it's near my mom's house. I'll get to go visit mom and and uh, have a free place to stay without having to camp out in the middle of winter. Of course, it probably yeah. won't be so bad down in Florida. Go ahead, Jim. Talk to your dog like you normally talk to him on air. Come here, little snookums. Come up here. Can you come up? Up, up. Uh-oh. She's like, I'm oh, Matt, you got called out, man. He said we didn't talk about the Strega. She's like, yeah, just Strega. Why, what, why do I need to talk about the Strega? I don't know. I didn't review it. When it says oh, we're to it. It. That's a love dog right here. Look at that dog nuzzling in like it's his <laughs> last day. Oh, what a handsome animal. It's like having a pet tiger, I tell my son. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Disease. <laughs> So I'm the picking up. Just looking at his butt a minute ago, and now he's looking at your no. face. She was totally on film for an hour. We know what she's doing. I <laughs> Jason, was pick- you don't let your dog lick your face, man. No, man. You, Not no dog. telling where those those you mouths. The mouth of those a dog is dogs lick their faces and communists. No, the mouth of a dog is dirtier than your toilet. I don't care. I drink from the toilet. Well, she does. <laughs> so so the other day I'm picking my daughter up from school and uh, she's coming out to the car. She gets in. I brought the dog and she goes, oh, my friends love dogs. I'm going to text them. So she makes a text and three 17 year old men with beards come running towards our car. And I thought, well, let's see what happens. Scary. Like y'all go crazy. The frightening. I thought oh. I feel much better now going to bed each night. This dog would kill you. I think so. <laughs> that's what you want in a dog. Sleep, and then, lick your face, and then kill people when she, they look wrong at you. They backed up, and she calmed down, and then they came back in, and it got twice as bad. And I was like, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Can I show you my, my recently departed buddy here? I say recently. But oh. That's Hans. And Hans uh, was – One cute the- poodle, man. I, he was almost 14 years old when he went. So Wow, that's a long time for German Shepherd. Yeah, they yeah. never – almost a full rarity. We had to let him go. It's been – I, mean, I say recently. It's been it's been a, over three years, but it's it feels like, you know. Super smart time. dogs. 
totally one of the smartest creatures. Jason, go ahead and do it. Do what? Call your dog. Wait till you see this beast. Jason doesn't even lock his door at night. He's like, here, chip, 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 chip. I think that dog's name is Yappy. Is he calling? Hey, Gary, come here. Come hey. Here. Can oh, you guys be. tell if this is my dog or my wife's dog? Oh, that's all you, buddy. Hold on. What's <laughs> that dog's name? Chiwu or? Dog's name is Molly. Molly. Look at its arms <laughs> spread out wide. <laughs> she hated people. Hey, Molly. So hey, the Molly. sucky thing about this dog was the local mall used to have a pet store in it. And we walked in the pet store because my wife liked to hold the dogs and play with the puppies. And that was fine until she held on to this puppy for two hours. And at which point there was no way she could give the puppy back. And so I had to fork over the $1,800 that the puppy costs. It's the price of a four pro with the controller monitor. That's what I paid for that dog. You paid 1800 bones for that dog. My goodness. She is a purebred Havanese, but geez Louise, right? But my wife loved her, and now I have to. Does Is it potty trained in the toilet? <laughs> no, but she is a great dog, man. She doesn't, like, yap or bark crazy unless somebody knocks on the door or something to let us know they're here. She's a good dog. I'll, Dude, I'll admit that. I picked that. up my dog for 100, 250 bucks at a truck stop, in, in a Burger King truck stop in South Georgia, out the back of an old uh, Chevrolet paneled side station wagon. Remember the full-size Capri station wagons with oh, the wood yeah, grain yeah. panels? And I met this guy at a truck stop and, and we pulled into the Burger King thing and he opens up the back and it's just 15 German Shepherd puppies across the back seat of this thing. And I didn't know what to do. I was probably 23 years old. You take the first one that comes to you. I, I picked one up and I looked at him and then I looked down and I put him down and I picked another one up and that was it. That was Hans. Them. Well, we're totally off track, but I will say that I had a hunting dog named Billy, and when she oh. died, I, yeah, that is, I named, I've had a bull named Billy, <laughs> I've had a hunting dog named Billy, and uh, when she died, I was just, I'd walk around, where's my dog? I knew my dog was gone, but it was terrible, and so my wife calls me one day, and she said, you got to come look at these puppies, and I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you invite me to go look at another dog? Are you kidding me? And then I went. And I picked this dog who was this big and she grabbed me by the braid. It was like, <laughs> and she said, okay, we got to go. And I said, I ain't leaving without this dog. And so I <laughs> laid the money down and that's where Nell was a rescue that her litter was left on the side of a road. Yeah. And now she sits here on the couch. It doesn't do a whole lot. Does it? She, uh, she's busy at night. They're busy I patrolling it. When the sun is as soon as the sun goes down. Well, anyone, hey, I want to thank everyone for hanging out uh, way past RC discussion. Matt yeah. Gunn, Jason Cole, another week has gone by, and uh, another week will start in a few days, so enjoy your Get weekend. closer to Joe Nall. <laughs> <laughs> you better get Toledo first. Toledo's That's up. right. Yeah. We got Toledo, yeah. I actually replied to Rick today and said, here, we're coming, and I put Ted Nugent on the list. Hopefully, I'll get my Ted Nugent name badge again this year. Yeah. All we right, well, hey, did you get us in the good hotel? Well, I that, haven't booked that hotel yet. Shh. Book it, dude. Don't, don't mention it. What, Jay? I'll say if we can keep it warm for one more month, you know, then we're good. Then we only got like three months of winter to deal with. Yeah. Three well, brutal, suicidal months of winter. When January rolls around, I'm ready to, to fly down to Florida. The older I get, the more I want to go to Florida, except for the hurricanes and <laughs> the glacier melting is going to ruin that whole state. You can go stay at top of the world, man. I think that's what we're all headed for, for retirement. If what you guys don't know what that is. Of the border. What do those the start world. at? They start at 250000 apiece, right? I don't know, but top of the world is a, an RC airplane retirement community in Ocala, Florida. It's probably one of the largest in this in the country. Like a but it's like community golf cart community, runways, RC modelers galore. It's yeah, like, RC. it's where we all need to go retire to. Uh, sure. I don't know, man. It sounds like a line of sight, step out of line. <laughs> yeah. <in> line. Oh. <laughs> Do not no. bring anything FPV. Do not hover anywhere near show center. You will be hammered. You, you lost the time we're there, there. It's all drones. Right. That's true. <laughs> It'll be everyone we know will be there. Uh, you know, like, uh, <laughs> 
Bob Sadler will be at one end of the field, <laughs> and then we'll have uh, Andrew Jeske and Jesse and Ashley, and we'll all just live in this community. We'll be able to fly like the Magic Five pros over at each other's houses to communicate. That's it'll be like it'll community. be like Joe Nall, only we'll all live there. <laughs> you know, you say the Mavic Five Pro, but with Mavic the way 20. they release stuff, that will be in about four years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> who knows, man? Who knows? But it'll be we'll be fine by the time we retire. It's well, gonna every, be nuts. Everyone, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, we got our second win just in time to to jump out of here. I want to thank everyone that uh, watches the video and subscribes, and I really appreciate people that hit the like button because it knows that you actually enjoyed the thing. And uh, thank you, Matt and Jason. I want to thank my lovely dog, Nelly, back here. Look at that. She is relaxed. Dude, she's going to heat up that uh, leather. That leather. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, join us next week, Thursday at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time. And tell all your friends. Bring them with you. Join the live chat. Um, uh, maybe I can fly with everyone in the live chat again next week. We'll see. Yeah. And that is it. I'm going to hit the stop broadcast button in case somebody here needs to yell out any odd word. In five, four, four three, three, two, two one. What you Mean Joe Vermillion. Live. <laughs> mean a, Joe has gotten a Let's bit. go flying. In a cage match with Nikolai Sinsley. Zelensky. Okay, Zelensky. <laughs> Okay, now I'm hitting the button. Bye. <laughs> oh, wait. It didn't work. No.